plasticized human bodies, cadavers, yeah. I can just write backwards and no one will understand unless they pull a mirror out of their butt and stare inside. Also, I recently dyed my hair green and I moved to London. This is my new art studio. Zhonghua. These must be like communist pencils. Oh my gosh! Hi, welcome back. This is La Princesse des Beaux-Arts and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to sketchbook like a goddess. Not a goddess. A goddess. I'm going to teach you how to sketchbook like me. These are a bunch of my sketchbooks all laid out here today. I'm going to go through my best tips and advice with you and show you literally from my own sketchbooks how I apply that. If you enjoy learning about arts, culture, and following my life as an artist, feel free to subscribe. And let's go. Okay, so sketchbooks, they're immensely useful because let's be honest, most of us, almost no one, is going from a little idea in their head and then directly making a finished, complete artwork from that without anything in between. If you cultivate the practice of sketchbooking in a way that's useful for you, that's very regular, applicable, it's an immense help in your creativity. Because as artists, we have this task of transmuting our observations and perceptions, view of our environment, the world, through this internal guide and then creating an artwork, which is the byproduct of art itself. You know, it's not the product, the object, the static object that's the goal in and of itself. It's the entire process that goes through that and sketchbooking is a huge component. There are, I think, a lot of different uses. I'll lay them out for you. For example, sketchbooking is really great for keeping track of your ideas. Because let's be honest, we, we can all have lots of great ideas. Even if you are a very creative, wonderful artist, if you don't keep track of your ideas, you will forget them. And then they will go back in the ether and someone else might have that idea or you'll lose it forever or you'll think of it in 10 years who knows but the best is to keep track of them also you can use it as a sort of journal or diary there are no rules to sketchbook even though technically speaking there's really no rules to art you're not creating something for the world to see and judge so you shouldn't really be seeing it that way for any artworks i think but it's especially true for your sketchbook so it's just for you to keep track of your ideas, to collect reference images and do research, to synthesize all of that and even practice compositions. So you can practice breaking down how you want a image to be composed, how you want to lay out everything in these little thumbnail drawings about yay big. You can also use your sketchbook to collect, experiment with different materials or techniques or mediums, do little swatch, swatches of fabric or overlays or different mediums. It could be like crayon, it's not crayon. Um, I was translating from my head in French. You can, for example, try out different techniques inside your sketchbook and it's just for experimentation. There's nothing that you can do wrong really. Also observational drawing. You can draw, keep track of whatever you're experiencing, viewing, witnessing in that certain moment. And you can really transcribe the essence of a space moment into your sketchbook. So I've broken down my these different usages into different sketchbooks. Though I'll start out by saying that if you are starting out with sketchbooking or you don't want to have a bunch of different books stacked together stowed away and there is a risk when you're using different sketchbooks for different purposes that you'll forget a few of them have them laying about and not ever complete one or leave it unfinished which has happened to me um but you know i'm working on that's fine so i suggest that if you start out with one sketchbook it should be ring bound that's my suggestion because sometimes with these bindings, this one is a bit nicer. This is my most recent sketchbook. Loving the red, it's giving me lots of good energy. But you'll find that with some of these bound sketchbooks, hardcover, you might have an issue with making it lie flat completely. This one, it's pretty nice, so it's, there's not much of that issue. But with a few others, you might have the problem of keeping it flat. So I suggest you start out with a ring sketchbook like that. You can just 
draw very easily and you can't do that in a bound sketchbook like this right so get something like this and ideally you want the sketchbook to be at least no smaller than letter size though i'd recommend you go somewhere in between these two formats okay this is a bit way too big to carry on you at all times another which is another cardinal rule keep your sketchbook on you for as long as possible as often as possible i put my red sketchbook in my bag every day even if i don't plan on drawing anything in there i use it to keep track of my ideas because they just pop up in the middle of the day at random times, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. So keep it on you at all times as much as possible and write down your ideas in the moment when you have them. Don't wait too long because then you'll forget them. Sometimes you can get at least one side in a hardcover, a hardback, okay? And not too heavy because, you know, there's a saying for photographers that the best camera is the one on you, the one you have on you. And I agree in the sense that the best sketchbooking material format is whatever you're going to actually use and keep on you so don't get something too heavy or something you feel is too precious and you don't want to actually use it get something that's comfortable for you and then that's that applies also to your drawing tools so for example colored pencils micron pens graphite pencils i don't think you should use charcoal to carry on you because it can get a bit messy but it depends on the person i guess you can do that if you want. A graphite stick is really nice too if you want to vary the shading, whatever. And yeah, and now I'm going to show you a bit of how I do that in my actual sketchbooks. I wanna show you the most up-to-date version. So how I'm sketchbooking currently as of late. So I started out, I write in French and English and that way you can't really read it or I feel different emotions in different languages. So I write down some poems, some thoughts, some ideas, observations, and here you can tell I've been practicing some compositions for artwork, art projects. And they are, these are these little thumbnail sized images that you can sort of practice, see what looks good, see what you think might be good, but then it's not how you imagine it to be or figure out that precisely. Also, you can totally use it as a sort of journal or diary. There's no rules on this really, I'm assuming, if you're just making a sketchbook for yourself. So I do have a lot of writing in here and hopefully you cannot read it, but I don't really care, you know. A lot of doodle sketches and what I've noticed, funny enough, is that oftentimes the sketches or drawings I find the most emotive, special, or unique, sometimes they're just doodles on the margins of my notebooks from when I was in art school and taking these horrid long theology classes as a supplementary elective in the Institut Catholique, which is the in Catholic Institute of Paris. I w had to take a um, class and I couldn't get the one I wanted because it was full at the Ecole du Louvre. So I went there and I listened to basically Greek and Latin theology the entire two hours. I could understand maybe 0.5% of that taking this trinitary theology class for two to three hours every week and i couldn't understand most of it so i would just doodle in the margins of my notes and some of those were the most fire <clears throat> most touching and special drawings i've ever made and they're not even in my sketchbooks <laughs> i also use it for impromptu sketches so for example this is one that i did in the cafe de flore this was just a few days before I moved from Paris to London. Story time in the next video, I promise, pinky promise. And you can see here, I sort of did a rough sketch of the ambiance. What I really wanted to do here was to capture the ambiance. So you see in all of your uh, sketchbook pages where you're doing maybe an observational drawing or landscape or scene like an interior here, Oftentimes I find you're trying to capture the essence or atmosphere of a place, not so much copying proportion by proportion, line by line, all of the specific objects inside. You know what I mean? It should feel a bit atmospheric and get the feeling of what you experience there. Um, also, I find sketchbooking is a great way to connect with people because... Sometimes 
when you're out by yourself, like I've lived alone for most of my life now in so many different countries, continents and cities and different cultures as well. So each time I move, I try to make new connections or sort of connect to people in a certain way. And this is great for that because people can be interested in what you're making and drawn to that as well. And you can exchange converse with them based on that. So when I was in the Café de Flore eating my little coupe de mago with the black currant coulis, there was this group of French ladies next to me and they got interested. And then we started talking about Raoul Dufy because the sketch somehow reminded them of Raoul Dufy's really lively interiors. Anyways, also I kept a little souvenir receipt here. So you can collect all sorts of little objects, memorabilia inside. There's really no rules to this. And then I also have, for example, you see here, compositions. I'm, what You can use your sketchbook to also design, set up, figure out how you want to do a composition of a certain artwork you want to make. So this is a little example. I was trying to figure out how I would block the text and the different sections of these images. And I wrote down phrases, words that I could want to implement into this. Be right back. I want to show you something else. One moment. This is another page from one of my other sketchbooks that I use for more loose, like, fuck this stuff. Um, but you can also use your sketchbook to do these layouts, storyboards, or composition practices, however you want to put it. And that's another way to do that. And continuing on, just a little walk through my sketchbook. I've been doing a lot more writing recently, and I find that writing is one of those skills that is so important because artwork or any sort of creative project is a, at the end of the day, a form of expression and communication. And writing, I think, is that sort of almost universal uh, form of communication that can really help you a lot. And I truly believe that everything you do sort of seeps into the other compartments of your life. So if you learn to write or collect your ideas in that form, and it can help you out a lot. So going on, this is, you noticed here I wrote, this is one Lynn's writing sketchbook. <laughs> so here was a little sketch I made on a train from Paris to Strasbourg to visit the Christmas festival last month. And here was a little sketch I made when I was feeling very... Ooh, like, I let me find a, I can't find a word for this, so I'll just, that's, that was how I was feeling, so I made a little sketch of that here. And more composition sketches and studies, whatnot. I also write letters to God, like, dear God, blah, 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 blah. This is a little layout of my current art studio. I'll give you a tour later. And some other little sketches. Oh my god, I'm gonna fall over! This stool is tiny. I have no ass meat. Okay, it'll keep me on my toes. That's good. Here, more little random sketches. And here, another more detailed sketch of my art studio. A little observational drawing. And more drawings from imagination. Just to work out how I would create a larger painting, what sort of elements I want. You can see here just a bunch of video ideas, but here was I made a sketch of the airport lounge in Houston that I went to because I didn't want to just go on my phone. I wanted to draw what was in front of me. Here is a little sketch of the old operating theater museum in London. It was a hospital and here they would do dissections and the doctors, medical students, they would go observe from these stands. It's really eerie, but very interesting. Oh, and here is this little picture that I drew. I was at Pilates one day and I saw the light, the blue and pink light from the ceiling. It cast this beautiful shadow on my face and I was wearing all pink. And there was only one pink light in the studio and it was directly above me. It looked so beautiful. It looked like a Toulouse-Lautrec pastel drawing and I thought I have to sort of capture this so I did I drew that and next I also did some 
quick sketches of skeletons just to practice my line work. I really like that. So these are some examples of what you can do. Another image that was interesting for me was this warped glass in a pub that I walked past. And then some more abstract not so much abstract, but loose sketches of flowers in my apartment. And, oh, this, this drawing is a little bit scary. I'll tell you a story about this later. I think there was like a demon attached to me or something. That, that is for another video. Okay, and this is another one of my older sketchbooks for observational drawing. You can see a video that I made of this um, from before. But these are just some, see, these are just some bits of, oh my lord, there's so much stuff in here. Anatomy. Turtle. This was from, um, this was from my first year at Ensba. So we would go to different places in Paris and draw each Wednesday afternoon. It was with Philippe Comard, he's a great uh, at drawing, blah, blah, blah. Some more sketches. Oh, this I really like. It's a Coella Camp from the Natural History Museum. From the Musée de la Chasse, it's this ceramic octopus by Serena Carone. I also like to write backwards in mirror writing because I'm left-handed and you can't read what I'm thinking this way. So you can personalize your sketchbook however you want. I like to divide my sketchbooks as well. For example, I have a writing sketchbook that I just showed you, the red one. This is a lot earlier, so this is full of observational drawings. See? It's full of observational drawings. And then I have others that are more, another one that's for research that's a lot bigger. I collect images and I write down my ideas and do other plans in there. And let's see another one. House party, cinema club in Paris. Oh, we were drawing at the Grand Palais one day and I got bored after drawing, making this drawing. It's like so-so. So I made like, oh, I made a drag queen version of it. This is really cool. This is the Jardin des Plantes, um, the botanical garden greenhouse in Paris. It's very detailed piece. It's a practice. So you can see that even with observational drawings, you can focus on different styles, techniques, or formats, or moods in each of your different observational drawings. You can try to work on something different. It's kind of like doing musical exercises. Sometimes you want to do staccato, legato, different patterns. And this here, for example, it's the Museum of Paris Mintec. So it's a mineralogy, geology school museum in Paris next to, next to the Jardin du Luxembourg. And here I practice drawing reflections of gla on glass in on these um, mineral cabinets. There are these collections of minerals. And this way you see there's a little faint shadow here. So you see in each of these observational drawings, I'm not doing the same thing over and over again. I'm sort of how do you put this? I'm focusing on a different aspect in each image. So I'm not repeating the same thing over and over, but that's just me. Another house party. Observational drawings of food and little notes. And it's just this over and, oh, there's another artwork in here. This is a drawing that I made for France Culture, actually. You can see online. It's called Les Enfants de Dura. Little, see, what I mean by using different materials, here I use tracing paper to see how an uh, organza would work on a silk dress. And then more drawings. This was from a figure drawing class. And oh my God, there's so much in here that I ev don't even remember. Ah! <laughs> okay, some of this I'm not going to show you guys. Then this is a sculpture, a relief sculpture in the Musée Bourdel. Some more notes and a little self-portrait. Oh, Museum of Natural History, the dinosaur bones, um, the aquarium of the Porte Dorée in Paris. So here you see I used pen. I did a completely different technique with a different ambiance. 
it's very different from all the other ones I showed you before, right? So in each one, as I mentioned before, I'm doing something slightly different. You can see all of this here, these little character illustrations, or I drew them from observation, these people. Some design ideas, just random doodles are fine too. Don't feel obliged to create a finished masterpiece. Then this is the Fragonard Museum of plasticized human forms. Like there's this anatomy museum uh, in the Maison Alfort, which is outside of Paris, that has a veterinary school and this museum of plastic <laughs> plastification, plasticized human bodies, cadavers. Yeah, he, he was related to the doctor who did these. Was related related to the great painter Fragonard who painted the swing. The things you learn from French art school, just so cool. Also the places you go, so cool. This is the Palais d'Architecture, the architecture museum here. So drawing architecture, a whole different vibe, you know? And yeah, see, so that's one of my older sketchbooks. To give you an idea of what the observational drawing aspect is like, Next, I want to show you this one. This is a bigger sketchbook with thinner, more like rough paper that I use. This sketchbook I use a lot for drawing projects, like planning a design or a project proposal. So here was a project proposal for designing a mural inside a staircase. I didn't win this one, but it's fine because I want to make a whole other video on all of my art projects that didn't get accepted, chosen, whatever, that didn't win a competition or prize. I think that's very important to know as well, how to handle that and the right mindset for it because oftentimes I find people avoid effort. They think it's a matter of fixed versus growth mindset, but I'll talk about that in another video. So here was a sketch that I did. See, because this is a bigger and sort of cheaper, so to say, paper with a lot more sheets, I feel a lot more comfortable just like drawing whatever in here and also doing a lot of draft ideas. Um, yeah, so you can see, because these aren't finished artworks, I just draw on each page and these are sort of, this is the sketchbook where I put my ideas. Let's see. There's a lot more, like this, even drawings, yeah. This is an idea of how I use different sketchbooks in different ways, but I think sometimes it's really great when you're starting out to have just one sketchbook because then you get a bunch of different ones that are scattered everywhere and then you lose track of them and you don't finish each one and then you have the piles of these things. Yeah, just if you're starting out, stick to one sketchbook. And here I'm going to show you one more. This one I just literally just opened last week. I've done, I haven't even finished the first few, first two pages. I chose this larger sketchbook to do research. So this is my research and uh, drawing sketchbook. So here I'm planning to do a lot more art history, uh, museum exhibitions, whatever. See, I'm currently doing a design project involving equestrian sports. So here, unlike the other sketchbooks, because it's bigger, I can actually paste reference images inside here. So I left some spaces to leave notes and do little sketches for whatever I want or write ideas. So I suggest when you're make, you can have, um, if you're using you only one sketchbook, get something that's a little bit larger, not necessarily this big, but something maybe a little larger than a letter paper. So you can have room to paste images for your research and references, all right? And then leave some space in between to write. That's very useful. I love this. It's so big, it has a little crocodile texture. Ooh, it's so me. This one, I didn't go through these before, so I feel, okay. I'm just going to show it from a distance. Not that it really matters that much. Oh, and you see, here is another sketchbook. As I mentioned earlier, you don't want to have too many for different purposes because then you might lose track. But here's a little extra. This is the mermaid from the Musée Bordès. This is um, N.H. Jacobsen's mermaid drawing, mermaid sculpture. And this is the Jardin du Luxembourg. 
Oh my god, I'm gonna fall over. Okay. Oh, I still have a lot to go in this one. That's fine. So for sketchbooks, here are my biggest tips and advice. If you're only starting out with sketchbooking, maybe stick to one. You want to be very thoughtful about the format you take as well because if you're starting out with one sketchbook for everything, I don't recommend you get something like this huge, this massive, this heavy and hard. If you're starting out with one sketchbook, I suggest you do rings. Like this one is a great starter sketchbook for all purposes. Maybe slightly larger if it's not a hardcover. I've noticed in the past that if a sketchbook is too heavy, too so quote unquote nice, or just hard to open because sometimes sketchbooks with this sort of Oh my god! Oh. 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 This is really unfair because I have almost no ass meat, okay? I do Pilates, I do yoga, but it's literally, oh, oh my lord. Oh. My southern accent, because I grew up in Texas, my southern accent comes out when I'm vexed. Some other tips for materials wise for sketchbooking with the ring binding because ring binding is really easy to manipulate. So it doesn't sort of close in on you like other forms of binding. For example, if you get a sketchbook that looks a lot like this, you might find you have trouble keeping it open. This one, it's pretty well done, but you can see sometimes it has this sort of issue where it could be very tight and closed. What kind of drawing tools you wanna use? So some, some that I would recommend. Micron pens are quite popular, but I've noticed that after years of drawing with them, sometimes having a point that's very fine and doesn't show much variation, it's kind of tricky. So I recommend you get a set of uh, pencils for drawing with different levels of graphite, you know? And also you can get little kits of colored pencils. I swiped these, I have no idea what these are but they're Chinese and I swiped these from my uncle's desk in China like seven years ago. He used to be an architect and I thought, oh, these are cool. I'm gonna try Chinese colored pencils. I don't know, Zhonghua. These must be like communist pencils. Oh my gosh. Because in the past, a lot of these businesses were like state-run. My friend also gifted me these very small colored pencils. They're so cute from Choosing Keeping. They're literally this small. There's this expression that the best camera you have is the one on you. And I find the same thing for sketchbooking, which is get a sketchbook and get drawing tools that you find useful for yourself, that you would use yourself not based on just what anyone else does. So for example, like you might love micron pens, that's great. I love them too. And get something that's not too troublesome or cumbersome. I also have a little um, pencil bag. This is this pencil bag I've been using since high school, okay? It's made of juice boxes and I got it from Barnes & Noble in Houston, Texas. Inside, I just keep glue stick, paintbrush, pencils, pens, you don't want to be too bogged down by whatever you have. Okay, some pointers for your sketchbooking practice. As I mentioned earlier, research, collecting reference images, writing down your thoughts, because honestly, I think so often during the day, oh, one cardinal rule, keep the sketchbook on you at all times for as long as possible, okay? I keep the red one in my bag always. Doesn't matter if it's a little heavy and I go out, as I mentioned earlier, don't get a sketchbook that's too heavy because then you won't put it in your bag and you won't write down your ideas, you won't sketch. Yeah, get something you will actually use, please. What's beautiful about having something on you at all times is that you can keep track, jot down all of your ideas. What's really sad is sometimes, let's be honest, your notes app is not sufficient to keep track of all of your ideas. It's fantastic, I love the notes app, but oftentimes you'll have these great random ideas during the day. And so much of being productive with all of your thoughts, ideas, is actually keeping track of them. Because if you don't, if you don't write them down, draw them down, you will forget them. 
sketch booking. Yeah, so that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed taking a little look over these. Take your sketchbook on you at all times. Take it with you to the museum. Build up your reference images. Draw, write down your ideas. Use your sketchbook as a tool. A practice to help you transmute daily life, your environment, and your internal external world into your final art piece. That is going to help you so much. Yeah, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. This is La Princesse de Rosa, Juan Lin. You can find me on Instagram. And I just moved from Paris to London about a month ago. I set up my art studio and I'm excited to give you so much more. So many more interesting videos. All right. Thank you so much and see you very soon. Bye.